Hey there, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. It is the first Friday of the month, and that means we are having Finish It Friday. That is when we take one of our unfinished projects that have been hanging out there for a while, and we put an hour in it, <laughs> an hour each month, and this thing's going to get done. So tonight, I am working again on my knit sheep pillow. This is from Pearl Soho. And it's a Pearl Soho pattern as well. Look how cute it is. So last time during Finish It Friday, so last month, we made the pillow, a black, basically, pillowcase that we stuffed with, um, with uh, fiber fill. And uh, tonight, I'm going to use... Uh, the Kitchener stitch to close up this hole. I had to look up how to do it again. It's been a long time. Uh, so we have two things. We have a provisional cast on that I need to take off, and we're going to do the Kitchener stitch to close up this hole. And then if we have time yet, I am going to start on the tail, which I have to pick up some stitches for. I, again, something I had to look up. <laughs> So, all right, thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so, all right, let's spend the next hour working on this little sheep. All right, let's go. So, <laughs> the, the funny thing about this is I think if it wasn't for this Finish It Friday, I probably, it would have probably been months and months and months and probably even a year before I looked up how to do that Kitchener stitch to close this up again. Um, oh, and just before I get too far away, it is the beginning of the month. So we have the new embroidery of the month, April showers. So uh, make sure to grab your your uh, pattern for this, your bundle, and we'll be stitching this up the third full week. So not, uh, so we got two full weeks and then the third week we will be stitching this. And I, and I wanna actually take some of those icons and make some more greeting cards like this. I think this is just so fun. We just stitched on a piece of fabric and sewed it right onto this, this card. We have both the cards and those bundles in the, in the shop right now. So wanted to show those again. I think these are going to be so fun to make. I want to make a, a couple of them uh, during the week that we stitch, stitch on that project. So, all right, let me first explain what we got going on here. So this is that bobble sheep pillow from Pearl Soho. So here is their like really cute photo of it. I have the gray and black one. Uh, you can definitely go to, it's a free pattern, and you can go to pearlsoho.com. I put a link to that. And then just do a search for the bobble sheep pillow. Uh, there will be a blog post with free instructions. And then you can use like whatever yarn you have on hand. I, I got this. Um, we visited the Pearl Soho store at some point and I got all this as a kit, this pretty yarn. It's got like this fat kind of bulky uh, wool and then uh, a thinner one for the for the head. So we, um, I have to finish tucking in all these threads on the head, but tonight uh, we are gonna address the hole at the bottom. So last time we were working on this, we made th this pillow. In the instructions, it says just to stuff it, uh, but it's stuffing is white and this is dark and I didn't want to see and you know I can see through this a little bit so I didn't want to see all the stuffing and I didn't want to kind of popping out so we made a pillow uh, that we stuffed and put in here we did a little ladder stitch to close it up so this is so much nicer so now you can't see any stuffing popping through because it's got you know its own pillow um, yeah and it's black so you can't even see it so that was Fabulous. I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. So what is going on here? Uh, well, first of all, I am not a knitting pro. <laughs> Whenever I knit, I have to look up if it's more than just like knitting some rows and purling some rows. Um, maybe like a yarn over here and there. I have to look up how to do it. So there are several things. This, is a, this has been a challenging project for me because I've had to look up how to do basically everything. So what's going on here is a provisional cast on. So a cast on is like the beginning of a row when you start a knitting, start knitting. Your first row is basically your cast on. You're, you're adding stitches to your needle. 
So with a provisional cast on, you're actually, it's a temporary thing. So uh, this white uh, yarn here, that's just like a row of stitches we've crocheted. And then we um, knit onto that crochet for the purpose of taking it off later. And that's what we're doing now. We wanted to take it off later so you can either knit more onto it or you can finish it nicely. And that's what we're going to try and do now is finish it uh, nicely. We need to close the hole basically, basically is what our attempt is tonight. So we have to first remove these provisional stitches. And what that means is we're just going to put all these loops that we're kind of holding in place, we are going to put them back on the needle. So I got, I got my needles here. I am going to uh, put these back on the needle. So I had to look up on how to do that because <laughs> I have not done uh, this before. And this was at the way beginning of the project when I had to look up the provisional cast stitch and do it. And now I had to look up how to take it off. So I think I got that looked up. Uh, and then to finish it, we are going to use a Kitchener stitch. And what that is, is a way to close it up, but have it look like it's just a continuation of the stitching. Um, we'll see how well that looks. I had to write down, I wrote down uh, some how to's. I had to watch a video on how to do the Kitchener stitch and I wrote down some notes. So hopefully I don't screw that up tonight either. Uh, so that is the goal. Take off this provisional cast on and Kitchener stitch this up and we should have a perfectly lovely sealed um, pillow when we're done. Later we'll put legs on, but that won't be, <laughs> that won't be this time around. Okay, so um, let's get closer up here. Let's see if we can do that. I think maybe we'll just switch over to here. Yeah, okay, we're gonna do this. Okay. Here we go. This is a close up of what we have going on here. So this is the provisional cast on and you can kind of see that it ends with basically what looks like a chain stitch. So and if we look at this closer, you know, we, it kind of looks like a chain stitch here too. So all of these little um, loops that this white thread is grabbing on, those are the loops that we need to access. So I watched a few videos on how to do that and uh, we're gonna give one of those a try. So in my right hand here, I have my knitting needle and I'm gonna actually just, this is kind of tied in a knot here. I'm gonna take that knot out. Ooh, this is so dangerous. Let's see how it goes. See there, now I can kind of pull the loops out. Ooh, this is gonna be all wooly too. Pull the loops out of this temporary chain stitch here i'm going i'm going slow all right i don't think this is a real loop here this is just an end we're gonna let that be oh gosh all this wool is everywhere okay so i think what i'm gonna do is this first loop here i'm just gonna put that in the needle like so and then I'm gonna take that loop out. There we go. And I'm gonna go in the, the next spot, pull that loop out. And we are just literally gonna continue this all the way along the line. So we're kind of gradually taking out that chain stitch and grabbing our next loop at the same time. It's not going to unravel as fast as you think. Teresa, that is one of my like greatest fears with knitting that I'm just going to, the whole thing's going to unravel. Like if I lose a loop, the whole thing will just unravel. And I know that you can pick all those loops up again and stuff, but I don't know. It's an unrational fear. I want to actually do a project sometime where I just knit a bunch and I on purpose screw it up like I on purpose accidentally <laughs> on purpose accidentally um make a loop go away and then like if I lose a loop it's gonna unravel all the way through I mean in theory right that's the fear uh so I want to do that on purpose so I can uh, um try and pick them up again 
then maybe that fear will go away. <laughs> oh, thanks, Teresa. Teresa says you're doing great. So actually, I can I could actually pick up several of these at once and then pull the thread out. I've seen it done like that too, but I think I'm going to just stick to this. Seems to be going well. So we're just going to go around this whole thing. Um, I'm using some knitting needles that have a really, really, really flexible loop on it. And that's going to help us later, I think. Uh, and I'm guessing, again, I haven't worked on this in a while, but these are the knitting needles, the size that was on, that was on the needle. Um, so I'm assuming it's the size I should be using right now. But it's it's getting stretched. It's we're working at it here. Oh yeah, Teresa says that there's some patterns that drop a row of stitches on purpose as a design, as a design feature. See, like I want to try something like like that. I think I need I need to like work on a project that embraces that fear <laughs> and uh, work on my way through that because that's that's the one thing with knitting. Like I find knitting just so relaxing. Um, I mean, you know, this is definitely more of a technical knit project where I have to pay attention, but other, my normal knit projects where I'm just making like washcloths and stuff, those, um, the only, those are just really relaxing and the only fear is all my stitches falling off the needle. So I need to get over that. I, and it's not even something to get over. What I want to do is learn how to just manipulate that. Here, I'm going to go above again if you guys want to see it this way so i'm just going to keep going i am i am above about a, a third of the way through here and i'm just going around and around so these are pretty tight i kind of wish i had a smaller needle to do this but we'll get it this whole uh, project was kind of definitely not my normal relaxing relaxing um, project. Oh, Luna's saying if I use smaller needles um, to pick up the stitches, then it'll be easier and you won't be afraid of dropping stitches. That's that's a good point. Um, I'll, I, uh, next time I do this, I'll have to do that. I think, you know, at this point when they're over here, they're, they're fine. I'm kind of going around this whole loop. So one thing I can do actually with this particular, these particular um, knitting needles that have this really loose bit, this is feeling tight. So I'm just going to actually pull it through. There we go. Then they can hang loose here and I can kind of start fresh with nothing on my needle. That's kind of nice. Big benefit of this. Oh, there. Now that, that feels much better already. I'm going to do that again. It's kind of like the ladder stitch. Do a few stitches and then you can pull it on through. That was really helpful, actually. All right, we'll go back to here. So just continuing undoing these chain stitches. I think this is this might have been my first provisional cast on. So again, a provisional cast on is when you want to you want to start knitting, but you want to hold those stitches because you're going to use them later. Like it's not going to be the final end of the row. It's, it's, uh, or the fi final, like, beginning of the row. You're going to want to use them later, like we are now. And all we're using them for is to make a nice, clean close closing to the hole. In, an, in a different project, you might pick them up and start knitting again, um, but not this time. All right, let's scooch around here. Going around this kind of tight curve. So uh, we're going on the other side of this provisional cast on now. Ooh, I got a lot of all this yarn coming off of it already. I think we'll pull through again. I 
I'm excited for the Kitchener stitch, though. Uh, I've done that before, but I always have to look it up again. And a Kitchener stitch is a way to uh, basically cast off, which means get all these stitches off the needle again, uh, but with two edges. And it's a way to kind of combine those two edges so it so it's like invisible. So instead of like just sewing down the edge or doing a normal cast off, which would leave like a, a lump, like a like a, a visible a visible edge, this this kind of makes it invisible, which is kind of fun. But yeah, Marie says like drop stitch is pretty easy to fix with a crochet hook. Um, yeah, that's that's. Like, I, 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 I get it all. Like, I, I, under, I haven't done it, but I understand the concept of it. Um, I feel like I learned how to knit, how I learned how to knit, and then later in life kind of learned some of the things that I was doing a little bit wrong, like purling in a weird direction or something. I don't know. And uh, so I feel like I had a lot of, like, learned habits that... Um, that now I'm like freaked out about. So yeah, like I said, I just need to do a project that on purpose addresses these things and I learn how to control it and manipulate them instead of having it be a fear thing. But projects like this are helpful. I, just cause these, this had a lot of things out of my comfort zone, um, things that I haven't done before, like this provisional cast on um, the the bobble stitch I hadn't done before. That's what all these little bobbles on here um, are. Uh, like I said, the Kitchener stitch I don't do very often. That's kind of fun. And uh, just, uh, I had to pick up stitches in the middle of this, meaning like you just go in the middle of your piece somewhere and then like grab onto some stitches and start an appendage coming out of that spot really um haven't done that before so lots of firsts and it's funny i've stitched i've actually knit like a stuffed animal animal before but man it didn't have all this stuff that i had to do with it or maybe i was just maybe i just did it how i could figure it out or something i don't know Anyway, we're almost all the way around, so we're just about done with picking up all these stitches. Actually, I think this is it right here. I got a big old crazy knot thing happening. Let's just grab... Looks like we got another stitch here. Okay. And it looks like we got one more little loop here, which I don't know if this loop counts or not kind of doesn't seem like a stitch. Oop. Yeah, I think I think that's just the beginning of this knot thing here. All right, I think we got it. So, now ideally, I would have had a nice long piece of string here yet um, to do this to do the Kitchener stitch, which is what we're going to do now. Um but I don't have that, so I'm going to have to weave this in later, and I'm going to have to use a fresh piece of, of, of um, yarn here. Um, okay, so I need that. So for the Kitchener stitch, uh, I need a few extra tools, or one extra tool, uh, but I also there's also the idea that I'm bringing two sides together. So we're going to kind of divide this in half. So this first stitch here is going to match up with the first stitch on this side. So we're going to go with these stitches and then however we end it at the end, that's going to be our last kind of stitch. And uh, um, actually, I'm going to kind of pull this. I might have to adjust these stitches because I'm not counting, but I'm going to just pull out like a center, a center kind of loop here so I can more easily get, I'm going to need both of these on both both stitches, both sides to have like stitches on them, basically. 
So I need to scooch all these up down the row here. Oh, Marie says, I've been knitting since 2007. I taught myself uh, with a learning kit. Oh, cool. And I learned something new all the time. Yep. Yeah, definitely YouTube is great. has a huge and great knitting community. All right, so all I'm doing right now is moving my stitches up onto the needle a bit. This is another fear that I'm just going to pull all those stitches off. So there's that side. Let's get a few on this side. And then I'm going to need one more tool for this. And that's a, um, like a yarn needle. And that'll look familiar. Um, I think I'll leave that out here for a moment. Okay, so in my little kit here, I don't know what side. Uh, not that side. So the other side, there's two little zippers. There we go. I got my little uh, um, needle. So this is my just a big old yarn needle, basically, or a tapestry needle, I think is what, what they're called. So it adds a huge eye. Um, you know, that's so I can um, put yarn through it. And uh, this is what we need for the Kitchener stitch. So the rest I'm going to put aside. Actually, I'm going to grab my, well, I have a different scissors. I like having a scissors in there, but I'm going to grab my yarn here and uh, uh, I think I'm going to grab at least Oh, I don't think I actually need to grab any. I can I can grab it as I need it. Yep, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to leave kind of a loose end here and uh, um, get some coming out of here. And let's take a look at the instructions now. So I have my setup here. Uh, so here are my little instructions. So Kitchener, use the yarn needle. That's my instruction number one for myself. Okay, yarn from the back of the knitting needle. So I'm going to pretend that the yarn is at the back needle. It's not really in my case because I'm going to put that on. Okay, the setup. Front needle, purl wise, leave on loop, back needle, knit wise. Oh wait, I do need this on the needle, don't I? Okay, never mind. I do need a, I do need a long piece of yarn here. So, all right, I'm going to just thread this this side and I need a long piece of yarn. I'm going to do at least like three times this length here and I think that should probably be enough. I actually need some of this yarn yet because I need to knit a tail out of it so I can't use all of it. Okay. Let's just give this a try. <laughs> Move all this extra yarn. Okay, let's do the setup. So I am taking, so I have both of my needles, uh, the rows next to each other here. I'm going to, for the setup, okay, the front needle we're going to purl. So that means like coming from this side versus this side, basically. I'm going to purl and I'm going to leave that on the, the um, knitting needle here. And then I'm going to, on the back needle, I'm going to go knit wise. So like inside out. Okay, that's my setup. And we're going to pull this all the way through. That's going to get a bit annoying, but that's the deal. Okay, I'll leave, I'll leave that link there. All right, so now the real, the real deal here. I am going to, I'll, I'll do close up on this too, but let's, let's do this way first. So, okay, we're getting in a little system here. So the system is, okay, in the front needle, we're going to go knit wise and then take it off that needle. And then we're going to go purl wise and leave on. And then the back needle, we're going to go purl wise and take off. I think I 
quite have it. Pearlwise and take off and then knitwise and stay on. All right, and that is that is the system. <laughs> knit pearl pearl knit. Oh shoot, and now I got to pull all this through. Oh, and it's super stuck already. So, all right. Hold on. I gotta pull all this through. Maybe I got a little bit too long of a piece here. We're gonna deal with it. Thanks for bearing with me learning how to do all this again. All right, but that's our first stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring a lot of this up through here. There. Now we should be easy. It should be easier. And I still need to, I need to keep getting loops on the needle here as well. Okay. Let's do the next one. Okay. We're going to go knit. And that comes off. And then purl and stays on. And on this side, we purl and take off and knit and stay on. That's the deal. That's the system. Okay, I think I got it here. Let's do a few more. So knit and take off. Curl and stay on. So pearl and take off. And knit and stay on. All right, I'll show you guys up, up close here what we're looking at. Okay, so I've done a few here, and you can kind of tell that uh, it just looks like more knits. Like, you, you can't really see a seam or anything, and that's, that's what we're going for. It just looks like part of the piece. Um, so, all right, let's, let's just try this again. So, I have both both um, needles here. Got my scrap yarn kind of out of the way here. So uh, for the Kitchener stitch, uh, we knit on the front needle. We do go um, knit wise. So knit wise is from like the, uh, the left to right and purl wise is from um, right to left basically. So knit wise and we take off, off the needle pull through and then purl wise and stay on. So we didn't pull it off the needle. Then this one we do purl wise. Now we've gone to the back. We go purl wise and we take off. And then knit wise and stay on. And that's basically one round. There we go. And that's what makes it just look like a continuation of the line here. Yep, exactly. Marie says it binds the the two sides together and makes it have no no seam. So, you know, if you're making a, a sweater or something and you 
you know, you did a provisional cast on, which is what we did here to, to leave these stitches, and then you, um, well, I don't know, maybe that's not the best example. Like, if you wanted to do inf an infinity scarf, let's, let's use that as an example. If you wanted to do an infinity scarf, you know, where, where um, you're basically knitting a scarf, so a long scarf, I have to say this out loud. Okay, knit off Pearl Levon. Knit off. So if you wanted to do an infinity scarf and you wanted to bring the two ends together so, you know, it's one solid round, uh, then you would need, you would want to do a, a, a Kitchener stitch so you wouldn't be able to tell where the beginning and end of the row was. It would be invisible. So that's kind of the magic of it. So pearl, take off. Knit, leave on. You're basically knitting another row, but you're just doing it with, um, you're just like kind of threading it instead. But yeah, see, we can't, can't really tell that there is a seam here at all. Like this is where we started. I mean, this looks just like how it kind of did up there. So that's, that's the deal. All right, I'm just going to kind of continue right here. Um, again, normally you would divide the needle so you had the exact same stitches, number of stitches on the needle. I didn't really check that, but since I have this really loose knitting needle, I can just adjust it quickly. So I'll, instead of counting, I'm like, meh, we'll kind of go in the center and figure it out as we get to the end. This is going to be great, though. So after um, the next steps of this project, hold on, knit off. Got to remember the order. Um, the next steps of this project is the uh, the tail. I gotta knit the tail, and then um, knitting the feet. So there's actually feet that attach to this seam that we're making now, and uh, I think there's just two feet really, like one here and one here. You could probably do two, but they just did one. Pearl off, knit on. But yeah, so I think that's really it. And then I'll and I'll block. I'll probably block the head and the, and probably the feet too. So blocking is when you just get something that's you know knit. For example, if you get it wet and then you kind of pin it to the to the um, shape that you want it to be in. Like if it's curling and, and moving in a weird weird way, you get it wet and then you, you pin it down and let it air dry. And that will kind of lock it in place really. Um, then it'll be kind of how you want it to look because it dried in that, that way. So I'll probably do that to the face of this guy because it's kind of floppy and stuff now. And we'll just work on that a little bit. All right, I'm on the front here, so I must have just got done with the pearl. Yeah, so I must be doing on the pearl here. Ooh, yeah, this is definitely, okay, pearl off. This is definitely one of those <laughs> little, uh, um, the Kitchener stitch is one of those things that you want to kind of keep your eye on the ball a little bit. So me yammering through it is probably not the smartest thing to do, but I think we're figuring it out just fine. Okay, back to the bottom row. Knit. Off. Our thread's uh, shorter now, so it's easier. Pearl, leave on. Pearl off and then knit. Tough to get up underneath there. All right, let's just um, 
kind of see where we're at here. Let's scooch everything up a little bit more again. Yeah, smaller needles would have been way smart just so all this stuff. I think this is what I knit it with. So you want it like just the right size when you knit, but like to do all this little stuff at the end here would have been just more smooth and flexible if I used smaller needles. You live and you learn, I guess. All right, so next part, knit off purl. Then the back, purl off. And knit. This is kind of relaxing, this Kitchener stitch. And I like it because it's kind of magical. <laughs> and anytime there's like this little, like a little magic trick in, cra in crafting, I'm kind of uh, down for it. I like it. Here, let's, let's go here again. Knit off pearl. And then to the back, pearl off. And knit. Now let's scooch up some more. Okay, knit off. Oh, we didn't quite make it all the way off. There we go. Knit off pearl. Pearl off. So this is used in socks sometimes too, to get like nice perfect seams on, on socks. Okay. Knit off pearl. Feels good to be working on a knitting project though. Uh, pearl off. This is kind of my only knitting project that I have going on. And I, and I, I, I love working on knitting projects, but this one's so involved. <laughs> like I needed to look up stuff again that I've kind of been postponing it. So man, I don't know without this finish it Friday, I'm not sure how far I'd be getting on this thing. So I'm pretty happy that we're working on this. And now I feel like I'm past, like I just have a, two little things to do yet. The tail and the feet, um, all this stuffing and making the, inside piece and all that that's just kind of done now um from last finish it friday so dang we're on like, like the home stretch oh gosh this is almost feeling like a finished project like for real that's exciting Oof. okay i'm just trying to get these last few stitches up on the needle here There we go. Okay. So look, this is, this is the Kitchener stitch right here. It just sort of blends in like our other, like our real stitches here. So it's kind of cool. All right. Um, knit, knit off, pearl. off knit and you know me me saying this like knit off pearl pearl off knit uh that's why i love knitting too like i love the repetitive like it's it's i mean it's like yoga or something you know um it's just meditation it is it's repeating the same phrase over and over again like knit off pearl pearl off um knit it's just relaxing 
super duper duper relaxing just that repetitiveness and that's why knitting is like one of my go-to um just if i just want to chill uh go-to projects and i like just super super simple projects like i like making washcloths but i've made so many washcloths now that we don't really need any so i can't uh i'm not really doing that lately I might need to adjust the number of stitches. Like, like I said, I didn't, I didn't count beforehand. Um, so I think we're getting to the point that I need to see where we're at. Two, four, six, eight on top. Two, four, six, seven on the bottom. Hey, not bad. I think let's just stick with that. Um, knit off. And I, I think I have just the, like, I'm happy with the amount of thread <laughs> that I have, too, amount of yarn. So I, I did the yarn um, about three times what I thought I needed and maybe just even a little extra, and I'm just going to have enough. It's always the worst when you're short. Knit off. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Teresa. Teresa says I kicked butt this week. I mean, um, so we got that bonus week this week because it was kind of half March and half April. So I didn't count this as one of my weeks to work on a project. So between our normal week, fourth week of the month where we just work on an unfinished project and uh, this week being a half week on both sides, plus a finish it Friday with it. I mean, I've just been working on finishing up random projects all for the past two weeks. It's been awesome. So we really, really moved ahead on the Orifil block of the month that we worked on yesterday. I finished the March embroidery of the month that I didn't have done yet. And uh, didn't we do one other thing? Oh, we made that bunny. <laughs> We made we made our cute little like Easter bunny guy. Oops, I'm through too many things here. Uh, and we finished that up too. So I forgot about him already. Sheesh, he's sitting right over here. Um, so yeah, that is we were like full on like cranked out the projects uh, these past few days, past uh, two weeks. It's been kind of awesome. And then uh, um, next week we will get back on our schedule because it's the first full week of the month. And uh, we're going to start with the Granny Square quilt again. And that's, that's and it's like, we're at the stages there that we're, you know, sewing together rows. So we're at like almost quilt top being done stage. That's pretty cool. Things are happening, people. Yep. Um, this gets legs and tail yet. And that's, that's it. Um, knit off. Jeez, I just had a brain freeze for a second there. Knit off. Pearl. Ooh, and you guys, the needle minders are going out in the mail, so you should receive your needle minder kit soon. And Monday, not this coming Monday, but the Monday after, so Monday the 12th, um, oh, did I skip something here? Wait a sec. I think I might have. Did I just go in the back here? I don't know. I might have just screwed this one up. I think I got away from myself. But anyway, the the 12th, um, the 12th, we will be making our uh, needle minders here. And I'm, I'm super duper duper excited about that. I think that'll be fun. All right, I'm just going to do the next one. I think I might have screwed that last one up, but who cares? It's fine. Knit. Okay, I suspect I might need one of these, these um, ones from over the top yet. So I didn't quite divide these up equally. Pearl. Off. Knit 
Oh, actually, we might be fine. Okay, I think we're just going to end it like this. So uh, this one we'll do the knit off. And then we'll jump up here and do the purl off. And really, I think this one was supposed to be on the other side. I'm just going to go through one more time and call it a day <laughs> to get that one off. And then um, I'm just going to go through the end here, the loop, and that will tie it in a knot. All right, and then then uh, um, there we go. Then all I'll have to do is tuck in these edges later. So I'm just going to use my, my yarn needle. I'm going to just kind of trim it so it's not so crazy long. But yeah, I only had this much left, so I'm happy that I didn't get any less than what I started out with here. Like, I'm glad at my choice of, of distance for the thread. But there we go! We are all closed up with that uh, Kitchener stitch. Uh, so here's, here's our, like, our starting point and our end point. And now that, that pillow that we made uh, on the inside here is totally enclosed. Uh, so here's, here's the whole sheep, just to look at it again here. <laughs> uh, here's his little face. So this is what I want to um, block a little bit, and his ears. So his ears. Well, obviously I have to tuck in all of all of these these um, threads yet, but the ears are a little bit curly. I'd like them kind of stay a little straighter. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to block those probably. But next up is I go to this tail area right here and using the same the same gray yarn I have to pick up stitches like 12 stitches here and then I just knit back and forth for a little while and that gives us the little boop of a tail and then we have two feet that are in the same um, yarn as as his head here so the 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 um, feet and the tail and the head are not stuffed or anything they're just kind of loose and floppy which is just kind of fun i think it's just a nice contrast to this uh, let me get that picture again just so you guys can maybe because this this is kind of looking crazy um so this is what it's gonna look like you know i don't think i would stuff the i don't think i'd stuff the um the face next time i think it's actually I, I really actually kind of like it like this. It's nice and floppy. Like it feels nice. Like I could, this would be great for like a kid pillow. Ugh, I would definitely not want to use all this super nice expensive yarn for a kid pillow, but there's so much to, so much texture to hold on to. And uh, the head's nice and floppy and the ears are going to be floppy and the feet. And you know, it is dangling and stuff now, but if I have this up on the couch, just sitting, you know, this is going to be kind of propped up a little bit like that. And I think, again, once I um, block it, I think it's just going to want to stay in this position a little bit more. And the ears are going to want to just stay in position a little more. I think it's going to be fine. So right now it looks maybe a little bit crazy and floppy. but And I think it's going to help once I have the tail and the, the feet on. It's just going to work out a little bit better. And it's actually really cute from the front um, with his little little face here. A little hard to kind of tell from this this angle but anyway at minimum it is a really squishy um poofy pillow and I'm, I'm just totally loving it so i think you guys i think we might end a little early tonight and just leave it at that i mean we could maybe tuck in these ends but i think i think i'm just gonna leave it like this for this evening um, and just we'll call it a early friday here so, all right, here is, let me scooch this. So here he is. This is the size of him. So he's, he's pretty big, uh, but he's just so cute from the front. You can see his little, little face. Uh, <laughs> it's sweet. It's so comfy and I love him. <laughs> and this again has been one of those projects. This is like almost a decade project now, I think, which is kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to get done soon here. Uh, but this, this was a big turning point for this project. I think for me, I can, I can feel that I'm in the getting it done mode now. It was 
getting that pillow on the inside that we did last time and uh, just taking off this Kitchener stitch. Like I was gonna have to look up how to do it again and all that. Uh, that was a big barrier. So um, thank goodness for this Finish It Friday kind of, and thanks for the encouragement of, of kind of getting me um, deciding to do this project uh, to finish it up here. And I think those are the biggest biggest chunks, I think, and I think I got this tail figured out. So this is just like a, you know, a chill weekend thing now too, not just a big technical project in my head anymore. So I'm excited. So, all right, you guys, I think we'll stop it there for tonight. I have a little early evening here and uh, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the, um, those stilettos. I'm going to make some up this weekend so I can show you what it looks like uh, when it's all together. We do have more. So we, we got like maybe 30 extra or so. Uh, so if you want to give it a go yet, or if you wanted to get a couple more as gifts or something, they're super gifty. Um, there are some yet, uh, and, but that's going to be it for, for this kind right now. Um, so <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like. See if you want them. Um, on Monday and there there will be those few left in in the shop But then on the Monday the 12th is when we will make them here and it's gonna be easy It's gonna be fun and we're gonna get like some juicy cute stilettos when we're done. I'm excited <laughs> I want to make a zillion of them. They're really fun So all right, you guys have a fabulous Easter have a fabulous weekend and I will see you back here on Monday Good night <laughs>